long silver rails here. Today we have this little 6473 horse transport car that J Man of the Metal Sharks bought at the Dothan train, no, the Pensacola train show. And uh, it's got a badly broken plastic truck. And I got this damaged uh, horse transport car. It has a broken truck underneath, as you can see. But I got this for $5, and the guy threw in this little flat car. So I could probably use this truck on the horse transport car from the flat car. And we have a replacement truck for it. It has a dummy coupler on it. The one that broke had the automatic coupler. But we'll make do and see how it goes. Obviously, the first thing is to take off the Phillips head screws at each end. Fortunately, it sticks to my screwdriver instead of falling on the floor. It says on here, built by Lionel, but it doesn't have a builder date, which is kind of unusual. Floor space, 725 square feet, fast express. I guess you want to get the horses there as quickly as you can. These are nice little, the smaller size cars. They go nicely in the older, smaller sized post-war train sets as it goes around the track, the horses bob in and out. And as you can see, it just pivots on this pivot point. Now our problem is that we have a rivet here. And I can drill this rivet out. And when I do, it'll probably melt some of the plastic on this truck. But it doesn't matter since it's broken. If I had the missing pieces, I might be able to JB weld it back together. But I don't. So all I need is a moto tool with a drill bit in it that's the right size. And hopefully it'll come out fairly quickly. I could just break the truck off and then use wire cutters to cut the rivet. That's the other way of doing it. Well... I'm going to see if I can drill out this rivet. I'll hold the truck. Boy, that vibrated so bad I couldn't get a grip on it to turn it off. Isn't that something? That was something. And this is hot, let me tell you, it is hot. But what happened is the plastic melted as predicted. And that's why it came out so quick, but the rivet's still in there. So we have to deal with that. So much for this. I'm not gonna continue drilling this. What I'm gonna do is try to cut it off with these. Now these of course are expensive, but mine's full of chips. I don't know why all I ever cut it is normal stuff with it, but so it goes. There it is, off. Oh, no damage to this part. Here we have a box full of junk trucks. This truck here, I'm not thrilled with, but I can use it. It might be a Marks truck. I'm not sure. But I'm going to look just in case, see if I have a better one somewhere. This is a Lionel truck. And uh, it's also the dummy version, but it's more it more closely matches the one that's on here, which is dummy at that end. I'm going to use this one if I don't find anything better. Well, that's the only one I see, so that's the one I'm going to use. And it'll be just fine. And the reason I like it is that if you look at this truck here, I don't know where it came from. It's got this thing that sticks down. I don't know if it's Lionel or Marks, but this hole here is pretty big compared to this one. I'm probably going to use a number eight screw lock nut and washer set for this. Now, looking at this, they had nothing here, no washer or anything, so we won't use one there. We'll probably use one on top, though. Somewhere in this mess, I have the uh, screws I need. We just have to look for them. Those are the big ones. Six, 
South tapping. Six, use sixes. I can use sixes, but I'd rather use number eight if I can find them. Sixes. I buy these boxes at uh, Ace Hardware. Number six washers. Well, I'm not finding any number eights. All sixes, so I'll use the number six. This was the long one. No, this was about right. We'll use this. A six thirty second by one half. Number six washers. Number six by thirty two lock nuts. These are the nuts that have the little plastic locking device in them. And the beauty of those is they won't work loose by vibration when you're running your train car. Oh, we take this truck. First, we're going to take a screw, a bolt, I should call it, and the washer. Drop it down through there. Looks pretty close to that, but not exactly. It doesn't matter. Now this screw, if it's stuck down too far, I would cut the end of it off. But I don't think it will. If this nut will not fit in the slot that we have right here in the truck, then I'll flip the screw. But as you can see, it fits in there. So that's good too. All we have to do is get this started. With my clumsy old man fingers, I may have to use a needle nose pliers to hold it. These pliers are magnetized. Magnetized. Oh, I need my. Once we get it started, it's a piece of cake. Get it started. We have to hold it with these. All right, look, rivets are never as tight as I like them to be. See how that wobbles? Some of the HO guys, when they tune up the Aethern freight cars, say that they prefer to have a slight wobble on one truck and this other truck real tight. Right now, I got a bad wobble here because I haven't finished tightening down this lock nut. But when I get done with it, it'll be just right. That's the beauty of the lock nut is you can control tightness of your truck when you replace it. Now, getting tighter, you see most of it, it's about the same wobble now as this. So I want it a little tighter still. That's just about right. Turns easy. It could be a hair tighter, maybe. J-Man can decide that when he operates it on his layout. So, a little bit of light rust in here. I'm going to put some grease in there. Just to coat it with a little protection before I put it all back together. This is Bachman grease that I use with the HO nylon gears and things. Gun grease would work just as well. Or car grease, tractor grease, whatever you have. The idea is to just try to keep it from rusting any further. We live in a humid climate down here in Florida. Well, that's pretty good there. The bottom is good, but he could do the same thing on the bottom if he wanted to. We'll let him worry about that. All right, here's the tricky part. I have to get these horses back in place. As you can see, that's how they work. They just pivot. 
This is the stop that keeps the horse from coming out too far when they go around the corners. Of course, they only go as far as the window will permit. But the little horse window is pretty broad. There we go. Horses are wobbling in and out okay. All we gotta do now is put our Phillips head screws back in. So far we haven't lost them, which is a miracle. I usually drop screws, and one of them usually rolls into some obscure location known only to God. And unless St. Anthony's on his toes helping me find lost objects, I have a hard time finding them sometimes. But if you don't know to ask St. Anthony to help you find lost objects, you're missing the boat. I do it all the time and have ever since I was a child, and it works. Very often it works for me. All right, that's one. I think these are basically sheet metal screws that go in here. This one's kind of cross-threaded a little bit, but it doesn't matter if it's a sheet metal screw. There it goes better. It's as good as new. Then we can try it out on the track, I suppose. There you have it, folks. Ready to go. One saved horse transport car. Well, now, with my trusty Lionel engineer's hat, we can now run train. Now I have kind of a funny lash up here. This is my Lionel Navy yard switcher that I got at the Pensacola train show. This is J-Man's repaired horse transport car. And these are my three Milwaukee Road 027 size passenger cars. And this smaller size box car or horse car goes pretty well with these size objects. So let's see if this little engine will pull. Folks, it's painfully obvious that this little locomotive needs to be lubricated. But I will tell you that even lubricated, these things are noisy. It's a nice little engine though. Got a little simulated hatch there, and I don't know what that is, but lots of little details. These are often broken. Don't ever squeeze it there, and be very careful if you get one not to break it. Make sure you have the little bell. Here's the lever for the reverse unit. The number 51, Navy Yard, New York. Kind of cool. I come from a Navy family, so that's why I had to have it. I wanted one for years. In World War I, my grandfather was on the USS Wyoming, and my great uncle was on a four-stack destroyer. In World War II, my father was on a PBY seaplane looking for enemy submarines and my uncle was on a destroyer in the Mediterranean and Indian Ocean areas. All right, let's see. I'm going to pull this train, but with something else. I guess we'll use this big Milwaukee Road GP7 since we have the Milwaukee Road passenger cars. Now, as I've said before, and I'll say it again for you younger folks, in Lionel land, 
When it didn't have the dynamic brake blister up here or whatever it was, it was a GP7. When it did, it was a GP9. They probably came both ways on these sevens and nines, but who knows, I don't. I like this because it's lit at both ends. here I might as well add another treasure from the Pensacola show I love these little operating box cars the smaller size this was not perfect there's a chip on the ladder I mean on the brake walk the brakeman walked on this walkway in the old days so he could get to the brakes and often they had vertical brake stands this one doesn't you don't see brakeman walkways anymore just too dangerous and I guess they have better systems now there is one thing that bothers me though, and that's when you younger folks run these older freight trains, but you don't have cabooses on them. You gotta have a caboose. If you're running uh, freight from the 70s on back, I don't know exactly when they phased out the caboose, but it wasn't that long ago actually. And there was a day when if you were on your toes and had the money for five or six grand, you could have bought one of those phased out cabooses and put it in your yard. I wanted to, of course, but could I? No. <laughs> The Milwaukee Road steam engine that goes with this set. This is the tender. It's in nice shape. If you get one of these before you run it, take the top off. Make sure the little spongy device that insulates the, uh, the board from the metal is not disintegrated because everything will short out possibly and then you won't have a, a working device in there. So always check that before you mess with one of these on the track. The locomotive is in the back shop undergoing serious repairs. Maybe in a future video I'll be able to show you how that turns out if it does. Thank you. Appreciate your watching. If you like, please like and please consider subscribing. And while you're at it, check out J-Man's Metal Sharks channel. It's a really good channel. Also check out My World 67, another old timer like me who does wonderful things with beat up old trains, which is what I like to do. I like to save the old ones. I can't afford to buy the new ones that cost a thousand dollars and more. I'd much rather buy an old one and spend a little money on the parts and save little bits and pieces of history as we just did with J-Man's horse transport car. 